I'm not even gonna lie, I don't have an exact 4.0 GPA, but it's a catchy title. <laughs> I believe that organization and productivity are probably two of the most important things in a student's life. And I got this video idea just talking to a few friends and realizing that everyone has their own unique tips on how to prepare themselves for university. And I just want to try a new type of video. Like, I love making vlogs, but I felt like it'd be cool to kind of change it up every two or three videos, do something that I don't usually do. And that brings us to this video. Today I'll be going over a few of the more essential tools that I've been so reliant on over the past few years, as well as some of the more cool and niche tools that maybe could find their way of use. Uh, what do I even say now? Like, how do I even transition to the next? Alright, so the number one advice that I can't stress enough is use a calendar. As a student, your number one priority is to keep track of the never-ending dates and times that just get flung at you. When are your classes? When are your exams? When are your projects due? And on top of that, you need to factor in social hangouts, I don't know, any errands that you have to do. And it gets really overwhelming. So that's why I think having a calendar is just so useful because you get to keep track of all of that in one place. Personally, I use Google Calendar and for me, that's just the optimal choice because there's a lot of cross-platform functionalities and a lot of things intertwined into the Google ecosystem like Google Drive, Gmail, that just makes my life a lot easier. Some other people, they like to use Apple Calendar or I guess like a physical calendar. Um, but let me actually show you guys what I mean. This right here is my Google Calendar. And as you can see here, there's like quite a few things on this one page already. You'll notice that I have some of my classes laid out here, some of my tutorials and studios, and some athletic stuff here as well, just like intramurals, making sure that I'm never late for a game. I think what's really been useful for me is being able to set all of these reminders at the top. So I use this for making sure I'm on track of my assignments. So if I go out here, I have all of these assignments laid out for me for the month. So I know exactly when I really need to start working on certain assignments and when I can have a bit more time to myself to chill. For U of T, and I'm sure at most universities, something that's really nice is you can just import these class calendars. So if you go onto your school website, wherever they display your timetable, you'll be able to export that and import that in. So that's been really helpful for me. Another cool tip that I learned from a friend is that you can actually make a different calendar for each of these events, different categories of events. So I have a calendar for athletics. So if I check it off, you'll see that all of my athletic stuff can disappear. I'll also be able to know by the color what category they fit into. So you can see that work hangouts are these green ones over here, school stuff. So that just helps a bit more with organization. And yeah, once again, I can't stress enough like how important it is to 
stay on top of your things. But honestly, that's not the best part of Google Calendar for me. Uh, what I really appreciate about it is the cross-platform functionality. So everything that I showed you, if I just pull up my iPad, everything is the exact same. It's all synced up because it's all linked to one Google account, not sponsored by the way. And even on my phone, that's just really helpful. No matter where I am, if I suddenly think of something that I need to plug back into my calendar, I can just do so on my phone. And then when I get home, just look through that and work, um, progress through my day like that. All right, tip number two. Number two on my list is to have a to-do list. And the main purposes of a to-do list that I use for my day-to-day -day is of course, number one, just stay organized. But number two, it's incredibly fulfilling. Like there's something about having check boxes, even if it's just mundane tasks that you're putting on, like do the laundry or clean the dishes, just being able to have a checkbox that you can check it off gives you that like instant gratification to push you through the day. So I kind of want to show you guys what I used to use and what I use now because both of them are like good options. It's just that what I use now is a bit more catered towards the previous ecosystem that I was talking about. So what I used to use is a Google Chrome extension called Momentum. So every time I open a new tab on Google Chrome, um, it would open up this screen and it would have this little to-do bar on the side. So for me, it was really nice because it was convenient. I'm always on Google Chrome. So it was nice to be able to open a new tab and just see all of my to-do lists. Here they have some really nice photos. It's a cool new tab page, but the downside to Momentum is that you have to pay for some of the more like premium features for it. But more recently, my friend Cinda introduced me to Google Tasks. Google Tasks is also just another medium that gives you to-do lists, but Google Tasks is a lot more integrated into that whole ecosystem that I was talking about earlier. So whenever I went on my Gmail or whenever I went on my Google Calendar, like you can see on the side, it's just on the side, which for me was like a pretty big deal. And there are some other cool things about it. You can just download the Google Tasks app on your phone as well. So let me pull that up. Exact same thing, everything's just synced all together. Easy on the go, you can just type things up and get back to it like when you're back at your computer. I also wanna shout out another thing that I found when looking online. I actually don't personally use this, but it's called Todoist. And I just want to put this here because it's another to-do list that looks a lot better than the previous ones. Maybe it could be beneficial to you. All right, so number 2.5. This isn't really something that is an app or whatever that you can install. I still want to talk about it because it's helped me a lot actually. So I always just keep like a stack of sticky notes beside me because a lot of the times I'll have like sudden thoughts maybe in bed or if I'm like rushing to leave. And for me, like I just don't want to open up my laptop, type something in. So it's really nice sometimes just to have the sticky note. If that's something that you guys think you'd need, I would recommend it. Save me a lot. All right, so thirdly, I want to talk about Notion. And personally, I don't even use Notion that much, but it's a tool that's so useful. If you choose to use it right or use it regularly, I think it could substitute everything I talked about before and kind of put it all into one place for everything that you need. So what is Notion? I'm gonna slap like parts of the Notion trailer over here to give you guys a better idea. But TLDR, it's an all-in-one organizer planner app with so many capabilities that I don't really know how to describe it. It's got tables, it's got to-do lists, it's got like pictures, links to other sites, like everything that you realistically need to do anything. Personally, I only use it for a few things, like for planning my YouTube videos, but you could pretty much organize your whole life through Notion. So I think one of the best ways to explain to you guys is just to show you. So I got a few sample Notion pages from my friend who relies on Notion quite a bit. And let me just take you through some of them over here. It's pretty useful for classes. Um, over here, my friend organized all of her class links together into one. Here you can see some like weekly to-do lists, um, class notes, and also just a homepage that can tie everything together. I found that my friends who really like designing and decorating um, are really keen on using Notion just because there's so much like design and creativity that can go into it. So that could be fun, if that's what you're into. But also if you're not, there's a lot of templates on the site. So that's what I use, like just really simple like chart templates if I ever need something, but that also gets the job done. And honestly, there's so many resources out there that I can make a video that just never ends. These were the key tools and resources that I feel like every single student should have in their day-to-day. -day. Now I wanna just go over a few extra resources, small things that you can download that could better your life. They are fairly specific. If you hear something that you like, 
Maybe you want to try it out. We have Flip Clock on iPad, which is an aesthetic digital clock. May or may not have to pay $2 to get rid of ads, but honestly, it's worth it. It's a nice looking digital clock. You have Eyedropper, which is a Chrome extension tool that lets you know the exact color code of a pixel on your current website. Alarmy, an alarm clock app that gets you to complete a task, like solve a math problem or take a photo to turn that alarm off. Picture in Picture extension, a Chrome extension that floats a video screen somewhere on your screen so that you're able to keep track, stay watching that video while also completing other tasks. And Forest, a phone app that helps you stay productive for sprints at a time. You plant a tree when you want to start staying focused and if you leave your app during that time, the tree dies, which we don't want. And honestly, what matters most is just that you're tackling your tasks head on making sure that you're staying on top of it. So for me, whenever I open my laptop, Google Calendar, Google Tasks, those are the first things that all automatically turn on. So that just kind of forces me to have to deal with my problems right away. So really just figure out like how to get that done for you, whichever one of these methods are the most convenient. And yeah, this was a pretty low key video, uh, pretty different from what I'm used to, but expect more vlogs coming up once the weather gets better. Look how nasty this is. Uh, something, something, outro, outro, ciao. But for my purposes, um, it was a lot nicer.